Hey, are you gonna, you gonna pull your gun? Thank you for your interest, but I'm still planning my approach. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Okay. It's just that uh, usually these things are supposed to be fast. Here, let me go ahead and do mine. You better stop right there. You respond to me. I make the first move. Hello? Hey, uh, just checking on a status. Yeah, I was just looking if you could uh, give me a time or an estimated time. Thank you for your interest. But I'm still planning my approach. I'll okay. let you know when I'm ready. I'll take another Roy Rogers. See you around. Hey, you let me know about that first move. Thank you for your interest. I'm still planning. I'll let you know when I'm ready. talking about in this video really is setting you up to build better relationships with industry, with companies, with contractors. You know, there's a lot of things that can get under the contractor skin that the government does, alienate them, make them, you know, just not want to engage in government contracting. So we picked five. We'll start with number one. So the first reason why industry may hate you is that you don't even care whether or not industry hates you. That's an apathy right, toward the way government feels about you. And a lot of that comes from this distorted view of the way the relationship needs to be between government and industry. And if you look at it as a business relationship, us and them, where you're on one side and they're on their side, you're out to get your mission, they're out to get their mission, then that adversarial type tone is gonna create this apathy with you. And, and really, anything you do that creates conflict for them or pain for them is not going to matter much for, uh, to you. A couple examples of this is when you release an RFQ with a due date that goes over a holiday or that's in a really bad time that makes the contractor have to spin around to try to get the proposal in time, maybe losing time with their families. Uh, another thing that shows your apathy is when you plan a big industry event that provides zero value to contractors. Now, a lot of times in government offices, we just want to maybe create an industry day just to create an industry day, rather than a means to an end, the end being provide an informative place for industry and a way to collaborate meaningfully. So actions for you, just to start caring about what industry thinks, engage in this idea of relational contracting. Think about industry, think about the relationship, not as an adversarial contractual relationship, but one in which industry is a team with you and everything you do could have an impact on the company. Number two, you represent a very complex and frustrating bureaucracy to most companies. And that's not only frustrating for them, but it's a reason for them not to even want to work with you. So what you need to do to overcome this is simplify that process as much as possible to contractors, companies, and industry days. There's ways to take complex things and turn it into simple explanations. It's good for you to learn that skill. You want to talk that way to companies that can provide a service for you. Number three, you lack transparency. So this is a big one. It's a big reason why industry just can't stand working with the government. The secrecy, right? The, just not disclosing important pieces of information that they need to know. The main reason why there's protests ultimately comes down to a suspicion because of a lack of transparency. When the contractors are suspicious, even if you did everything in the right, if you did not communicate that to them, they're gonna protest. There's two reasons why I think the government has a problem disclosing things. One is a fear of breaking the rules. So usually when you're in a source selection or a competition or talking to companies, you wanna button down the hatch, 
not disclose anything because you're afraid you'll get protested. Second reason why I think the government clams up a lot is really just they don't have time to explain or they don't think they have time. They don't have time to sit and explain everything to every company. So the action to overcome this is just to know that erring on the side of silence does not work. Erring on the side of more disclosure always creates a better relationship and a better outcome for you. Take the time to explain. The fourth reason why I think uh, industry hates you is that you describe your needs and your requirement very poorly. So ambiguities and vague terms and contract language, it's the consternation of future offerers. If they misunderstand what you're trying to do, they could spend a whole bunch of resources and money trying to understand only to find out they were off the mark because of your bad explanation of your requirement. So one example of this can even be using certain contract methods poorly, such as lowest price, technically acceptable source selections, or LPTA. Now LPTA can be great, but it's often used the wrong way, where you say lowest price, technically acceptable, and your measurements on what is technically acceptable is so vague and so broad that always leads to a bad contract. So actions you can take to prevent yourself from falling into this trap for the benefit of industry you can train your cores, your requirement officials. You can work more as a team to make sure that that requirement that goes out is something that could easily be understood. Now, I always go by the two paragraph rule with a performance work statement, for example, which is if you can't understand what your requirement is about in the first two paragraphs, it is a poorly written work statement. Okay, the fifth and final reason why industry may hate you is that you don't pay them. Oftentimes we look at invoicing and payments as just another requirement that you have to do in your long list. It's not just another requirement. Paying a contractor that money is the lifeblood of that company and you've got to take that more seriously. Now I've been in that same boat where amongst all the different duties that I've had there was an issue with wide area workflow or electronic invoicing where there's multiple roles, an approver, an acceptor, you know, and, and I had to be the one to try to untangle that. It's not fun, it's paperwork, it's an administrative task, but it is so important to the vendor. So my recommendation for the sake of industry is if a vendor is not getting paid, make it a code red. Teach your team, if you're a manager, to understand why this is important so they can prioritize payment issues and know when to elevate. If there's a problem with electronic invoicing, some bureaucratic knot, Take it up to your boss and say, sir, ma'am, this company's not getting paid. We've got to work this out. We hope you enjoyed this video. There's many other reasons too of how you can get under industry skin. If you did enjoy this, comment, subscribe, like, and we'll just keep generating this content. And there's also reasons why industry will love you other than just giving them a contract. So if you're interested in that, comment below. We can make that content as well. Good luck. Hey, I just pulled my gun. Where are you at? I don't have all day. Industry. Acquisition's hard, but it doesn't have to be. Whether you're from government or industry, if you're looking for solutions to your hard problems, click the link below to schedule a chat. We'd love to hear from you.